god, no. No, that can't be right. Why is this steam? It's not really going to plan, is it? Hey everyone, welcome back. As we all know on TikTok, there are many recipes that always go viral. And in the past, I've actually done videos where I've tested the recipes. I've done two of them before. It seems to be like a yearly thing. I've done one two years ago and one last year. And I thought I was due to do another one because I have noticed a few recipes go viral and I've been dying to try them. So I was like, why don't I do a video where I test four recipes and I'm gonna do it kind of what I eat in a day style. So I'm gonna do breakfast, lunch, dinner, and dessert. So what I'm gonna have for breakfast is the overnight wheat bix which is a pretty recent trend. And I'm really curious about this. I've never really been a big wheat bix person. Also, if I say Weetabix, that's because I'm saying it the English way. I'm really curious about this recipe. I've actually already prepped it because you do have to leave it overnight. I know that overnight oats have been a pretty big trend for a while. So this is kind of similar. I actually made a Biscoff and banana overnight wheat fix recipe. I haven't actually seen other people do this, but I thought it sounded like a great combination. So this is what it looks like. It smells kind of like banoffee pie. So you're gonna start off by crumbling two wheat fix into your container. I've seen some people only add a dash of milk, but then other people add half a cup of milk. I personally think adding more milk is a little bit better because then it just makes a thicker layer. Then you just want to make sure everything is covered and soaked and then pat down the wheat mix. It's up to you if you want to sweeten the wheat mix, but I thought that it would be nicer with like a little bit of sweetener. So I'm just using this sugar alternative, which is stevia. Now it's time for the yogurt layer. So you need a bowl. I'm just guessing when it comes to the yogurt, I've done three tablespoons here. I'm just gonna add one scoop of the protein powder. I then added half a teaspoon of the smooth Biscoff spread. Once that's all mixed in, you just want to dollop it on top of the wheat mix. So I'm using another teaspoon and I'm gonna put one teaspoon in a bowl and I'm gonna melt this in the microwave and then I'm gonna drizzle it on top. I know it might seem like a lot of Biscoff, but I'm now gonna decorate it with one of the Lotus Biscoff biscuits. I'm just gonna pop that right in the middle. And then since it just comes in a two pack, I thought I'd crumble the other one and scatter that on top. And that's all that I did. I feel like it would be nice with a banana on top since the protein powder is banana flavored, but also I don't even know if you'd need that. I'm gonna get my one out of the fridge and try it for you guys. Literally feels like cheesecake. That's the consistency that I'm getting. That's better than I thought and also different to what I thought. I thought that the wheat bix at the bottom was gonna be a lot more dry. I feel like it wouldn't be very nice if it was dry and crumbly. I love like a dense dessert. And even though this isn't meant to be dessert, it tastes like a dessert. I'm not even saying this just because I'm filming a video, but I honestly rate that a 10 out of 10. Although I probably couldn't have it for breakfast every single day. It's quite like a sweet breakfast. I prefer savory, but I think it would make such a good dessert. It's now time to make lunch and I'm gonna make the green goddess salad. And this recipe went viral on TikTok by a creator called Baked by Melissa. So a lot of people have been recreating her recipe, but I know some people have also changed it up as well. So I have seen some people add half an avocado into this recipe and then they blend it up with the dressing. Just because the whole salad is pretty much like wok, but without the avocado. So it kind of makes sense to have it in there, but it's not in the original recipe created by Baked by Melissa. So maybe I'll leave it out and we'll see what it tastes like, but I'm such an avocado lover. So I kind of want to have it in there. I'll pop the original recipe on the screen here if you guys want to follow it, but I think I'm going to kind of change it up myself just based off of the ingredients that I got because it does say that you need a shallot and I don't have a shallot. I was honestly really confused because when I Google shallots, it comes up with green onions. Are they not the same thing? Is spring onions and green onions not the same thing? It says here that what Australians call shallots generally refers to green onions or spring onions. And this is, this is a spring onion, but I thought like green onions and spring onions were like the same thing. So I'm a bit confused. So I guess I don't have a shallot, so I can't include that in the recipe. And also I didn't get basil leaves. And the only thing that I'm gonna do differently is switch out the nuts. So I'm not gonna use walnuts and cashews. I'm actually gonna use almonds, but she said you can use whatever nuts you want. For the 
dressing it says to add a cup of basil and spinach. I don't have basil, so I'm just kind of eyeballing this. It also says a handful of chives, but they only had little packets of chives at the supermarket and I've used all of them in the salad already. Now I'm gonna add two cloves of garlic. Then it just said a quarter of a cup of lemon juice and a quarter of a cup of olive oil. I'm a bit confused about how many nuts they put in there, but it looked like about a handful. Nutritional yeast looked about a quarter of a cup as well. Now finally, just salt. I don't know if that's enough liquid. I think I might've done too much spinach. I'm gonna add a little bit more olive oil and maybe a little bit more lemon juice. This is not blending. One more time. Not really going to plan, is it? Am I missing something? Did they say like add a cup of water as well? Because this seems not liquidy enough. I'm gonna taste test the dressing just on its own. It's really good. Very sour. I'm gonna add a little bit of water. Why is there steam coming out of this? so good it's pretty much guacamole so I've served up in a bowl I've still got heaps left that I can keep in the fridge and I'm gonna try it with a corn chip the green onions are really really strong they taste great but I feel like they're a little bit overpowering like I can mainly taste green onion I also agree that avocado would be really nice in this and maybe a bit more salt. It's so satisfying to eat though because it's like you're eating guac but you're actually eating like a proper meal. I definitely think if you're gonna make this, the finer you chop up the veggies, the better because I chopped my cabbage and cucumber up pretty fine but I still feel like it would be even better if it was even finer. Okay, so it's time to make some dinner and I'm gonna make Hayley Bieber's pizza toast, which looks so good and it's very different to anything I've tried before. I haven't tried a lot of these ingredients. I don't think I've actually ever had burrata or truffle oil, so I'm really curious to know what this tastes like. This is truffle flavored olive oil. Is that just truffle oil? I'm not sure. So Hayley Bieber makes her pizza toast or sourdough, I believe. So I've got some chopped up sourdough, We've got burrata, parmesan, some nutalex. She said to use butter, but I don't really like the taste of butter, so I've got this instead. Some tomato, truffle oil, and then you just need some pasta sauce. She said to use marinara sauce, but I don't think in Australia it's like easy just to get specifically marinara sauce. I'm pretty sure it's just like regular pasta pizza sauce. So I Googled it and it said in Australia, it's the same as Napolitana sauce. So I've got this one by Raguletto. I just got it from Coles. So she starts off by taking the sourdough and she actually butters both sides. I think I'm just gonna do two pieces cause these are huge. I can always make more afterwards. She then adds a drizzle of truffle oil. And you just wanna cook your toast until it's golden brown on the frying pan on both sides. Now time to add the burrata. Is it meant to sit in the water? It's very full. Why is there only one big thing of it? Are you meant to like break it off? I don't understand how to do this. Oh, no, that can't be right. Can you tell that I've never had burrata before? This actually looks disgusting, the way I'm doing this right now. How come when she does it, it looks so nice? Look, I don't know if we're gonna have enough for another pizza. I'm just gonna pop this aside. Also, I have put the oven on. I'm just preheating it because you need to pop them in the oven in a bit. But I'm gonna chop up some tomato now. I think I'll only need one. And I'm gonna dress the tomato in olive oil, lemon juice, and some sea salt. She then actually adds a little bit more truffle oil on top of the tomato. And then in the video, she pops it in the oven to bake at around 190 degrees Celsius. And then she takes it out after like a few minutes and adds some Parmesan on, but I thought, I might as well just add the parmesan on before putting it in so I don't have to take it out. Now time to pop it in the oven. So I'm just gonna pop it on these racks. Now that's out the oven, she says to add warm sauce. This is actually looking really good. I take it back, the burrata, 
looks great, especially now it's melted. Then she just grates some more Parmesan on top. And finally, she adds some oregano. Although I feel like in America they say oregano. That's what Siri says on the video. And she also adds a little bit of chili flakes. I'm not gonna add, oh, that seemed like a lot. And that is it. I don't know what to expect, but I just know it's a lot of cheese. You made a mess, didn't you? It all fell off. I'm gonna kind of hold it. Oh, that's actually really good. See, like, I like it, but I don't know if I like the cheese as much as, like... Yeah, it's a lot of cheese. I think I put, like, double the amount I was meant to put on. All the inside was with the lap. All I'm left is with the crust. Well, the same thing didn't happen to me. Do you know what? That is actually really good, and I do recommend that. But... I will say it took a while to make because there were a few steps going on, but such a cool, different way of making a pizza. I think burrata is essentially just mozzarella from what I saw on the, the um, packet. It doesn't taste like it. Burrata is a delicate shell of fresh mozzarella that encases a decadent mixture of mozzarella and cream. I can tell you one thing, I don't think my tummy is going to be happy. So it's actually the next day. I did plan on making the custard toast for dessert, but not gonna lie, after having the pizza toast, I was so full and actually felt a bit unwell because I don't do well with a lot of dairy and that was quite a lot, but it was delicious and worth it. But I was like, you know what? I'm gonna make the custard toast tomorrow. And I was really surprised because it actually doesn't even contain custard. It actually contains yogurt and the yogurt is mixed with maple syrup and an egg. And I guess that is what makes the custard. So I've seen a few people add chocolate chips into theirs and then other people add raspberries. So I was like, you know what? I might as well make one and just mix some chocolate chips and raspberries together. As for the bread, I'm just gonna use some traditional white bread because I thought this would be the easiest way to make like a little crater for where the custard would go. So I'm gonna use this instead of sourdough because sourdough can be kind of like tough to bend, I guess. You can also cook the toast in either your oven or the air fryer. And I'm gonna try my air fryer because I've never put toast in my air fryer before. And I'm just, I'm very curious to see how this is gonna turn out, but it sounds delicious. It might be kind of like a French toast, maybe. <laughs> Now just pressing the bread down in the middle to make like a little well where the custard's gonna go. Now time to pour in the custard. I'm gonna make two, I was gonna make one, but I definitely made <laughs> too much custard for just one. Now to fill it with some toppings. So I've just got some chocolate chips. I don't know if both pieces of bread are gonna fit in my air fryer. <laughs> Okay, it's been in for about 10 minutes. That looks so good. It's very golden, but it's also really raised. I don't know if you can see that, but the custard is fully raised up, but it looks so nice. I've got to toast the raspberry one now. All right, let's see how this one turned out. I don't know if it's done or not, just because, I don't know if you can tell, but like it's a little bit like wobbly in the middle and it's the same with the other one. Like it's a bit sloppy still. I think I'm actually gonna put a little bit of maple syrup on top. I feel like this would be nice or cinnamon sugar. I don't actually have cinnamon sugar, but I thought that would be a nice little thing to add on top. Oh my God, no. So runny. Is that what's meant to happen? Because it's just ran everywhere. remind me of do you know what that reminds me of a chocolate hot cross bun even though it's a bit messy I really do rate that like the chocolate has fully melted and it doesn't even taste like yogurt it actually does taste like custard all right let's try the raspberry that's really good too. I've heard mixed things about this my sister said that she's heard that people have said it's quite bland and I've actually seen a TikTok as well where someone was like, oh, it's really bland. But I personally don't think this is bland at all. I don't know if it's because of the yogurt that I used or the maple syrup, but this is so full of flavor. So they are the four viral TikTok recipes that I wanted to try. 
I honestly thought they were all super, super delicious. I think my favorite based off of what I'm most likely to recreate would have to be the custard toast, particularly the raspberry one, because I feel like that would be such an easy breakfast. The only thing that's like not easy is just waiting for it to cook, I guess. My second favorite would have to be the green goddess salad, but next time I won't put as much spring onion in it because the rest of the day I felt like I had onion breath and that's the worst, isn't it, when you feel like that? Third favorite would have to be the overnight wheat bix. I'd love to try some different variations of that. And then my fourth favorite would have to be the pizza toast. Even though it was delicious, it still was a bit of prep and it did upset my tummy quite bad because it was a fair bit of cheese, but you definitely should give it a try. Let me know if you guys have tried any of these recipes and what you thought of them, or if you want to try out any, or if I should try out any in like a future video, even just in a vlog. But I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.